Okay everyone, heading into the shop. I didn't want to say nothing right when I was in the house because my bedroom is right here. My fiance is in there sleeping. But heading in the shop right now to work on a pretty neat project. As you saw in the title. <laughs> um, cutting the centers out of some H1 wheels. Um, customer, which is a member of, of my off-road club, um, that I'm the founder of. It's not mine. There's a bunch of us on there. Um, I'm just the one that built the forum and the website and started putting it together. Um, anyway, he's he did a solid axle swap on the Suburban, and he's putting some H1 wheels on it. And he tried to cut the centers out with, um, what do you want to call it, um, a brake lathe. That would be this one right here. You can see the nice shiny area. I um, guess it didn't work out too well. It did cut quite a bit of groove in there, but it didn't work out too well. So he asked me if I can cut them out with my Everlast Power Plasma 50. And so that's what I'm getting ready to do. He's going to pick these up tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to show you guys that process. But what, let me show you real quick the overall design of these because a lot of people don't get it. Um, this is your outer rim right here, okay? This is what it looks like. It's eight lug. Um, this is a, a 24 bolt wheel, H1 wheel. Um, you'll have your eight, you'll have your 12, and your 24. What they're talking about when they when they give you those numbers is they're referring to these bolts holes, not your lug nuts, these bolts. And what these bolts are is what bolts this outer rim to the inner rim, okay? And you can see right here, you can see the back side of the studs. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand. You see that? So it's just two pieces of bolt together. And if you look right in here, I don't know how well you can see that, right there where my finger is, this one. There's a groove right there where there's a seal that goes inside of there. Okay, um, you'll have the rubber seal, you'll put it in there. Um, and essentially you just bolt all those bolts together and it smashes that seal which seals up the wheel and, and clamps the wheel. Now those of you that have been interested in these H1 wheels know that they're bead locks, okay? <coughs> The beadlock mechanism works because these are a two-piece wheel. Um, I don't have the, the part that actually locks the bead. Um, if you go to, who is it, trailworthyfab.com, um, you can check them out. I'm sure you guys already know those guys sell all the, the H1 wheels that have been recentered and everything. Um, they have PVC inserts. Okay. Um, what it is is just a round piece of PVC tube that slides over, you know, that, that fits inside of here, okay? Um, it's too tight of a fit to pop off the sides, so when you have your tire on, your bead sits here and your bead sit here, and then you have the PVC insert that sits between the two beads. Now as you compress the two wheel halves together, that bead, that PVC insert smashes the bead up against the side of the, you know, where the bead sits. So it doesn't allow it to push the bead in and come unseated. So that's how those work. It's a really neat design. I really wish somebody would come out with an affordable version of these in standard sizes like 15 and 16 and 17. Um, I know there's a 17 out there that's the same style, but it's not really, it's not really that affordable. Um, I wish they would come out with something a little bit more affordable that was just like these in those sizes, especially in a 15 inch wheel, because um, there's not a lot of tire sizes that'll fit these. These are 16 and a half. So you either have the option of going with 
some wheels that they or some tires that they don't make anymore or going to BF Goodwrench and getting the the all terrains because they do sell the all terrains in a 16.5 down to a reasonable size which is 33 35 and then they move up from there um, or you're stuck with going with really really high dollar tires um, Interco has a bunch of them um, Pitbull has a bunch of them you're basically looking at three to five hundred dollar tires a piece so you save on getting your wheels but you're spending a boatload of money on the tires and the tire sizes are not really that small I don't know I think Interco sells the bogger down to a 33 and a 16.5 inch tire um, but I don't know how wide it is either which way it doesn't really matter um, so anyway let me show you what the process is here I'm going to use this this inner part of the wheel as a guide you see here that's where the the lathe was cutting so I'm going to take the plasma cutter and I'm just going to rest the tip right here and then just drag it and use that as a guide and drag it all the way around okay um, it doesn't matter if it's completely hold on something's going on with my focus here okay I'm not sure how I zoomed all the way in on you guys but either way um, <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if the two rings are equal um, the more meat the better but the the wheel as you can see here starts to curve out for this little lip so you don't want to have this big outer lip on it. I mean you can it's not gonna hurt anything but I guess it just changes the look of the wheel. If you want it, you can have it. It'll be one other place for there to be debris and crap to catch though. Um, so they don't have to be even. The whole point of that hole is to get rid of the center section and allow you to gain access to the new center that's gonna be welded in to the rear part of the wheel, okay? The rear half is where you're gonna drop in the new wheel center and weld it. I'm not doing that part, he is, so you're not going to be able to see that, unfortunately. Um, not this time around, I'm just going to cut them. I've been seriously thinking about getting a set of these, and I still might. I really still might. There's a possibility that I might run them on Project Pathfinder. Um, I really like the way they look. They look tough as shit. Um, the only problem is, is the tire options so I'll have to run the all-terrain because I don't want to go out and spend a ridiculously ridiculous amount of money on tires that are just going to get tore up driving on the street um, so I do plan on having an extra set just for off-road purposes so I don't know I've got some time to think about that but I you you might see me go through that process so anyway um, talk to you guys in a second. I'm going to get the camera set up, get all this set up to cut, and I'll show you the whole process. Okay, everyone, um, I'm not going to show you me <clears throat> grinding off all of, all of these wheels because that's fucking pointless. I already showed you cutting them. <laughs> um, basically, because of the, the torch angle or whatever, how I'm coming across here, sometimes there's a little bit of a lip and the cut's not quite even. So what I'm doing is coming back through here with the grinder, grinding off that little raised lip so that it's all nice and flat on the inside and then just smoothing up the transitions. There's a couple of piercing marks and then just the rough areas where my hand was kind of shaking because it's vibrating around the, the lip. So I'm just cleaning all that stuff up, making it look nice and, nice and clean. 
and calling it a wrap. So this one's done. Let me show you how it's going to look on the on the rear section. So there you go. Big giant hole and then the, the wheel center will press in like I said to the back wheel or the back section of the wheel. Um, then there will be a bit of a gap in between here and that's where you're going to bolt it in. Um, I'm not sure how all the wheel centers go. Some of the wheel centers are flat. Um, some of them are a dish type. I don't know which size type he has. Um, either which way, for the for the sake of trying to preserve these wheels, I know they're really thick metal. I would suggest on whoever you get your wheel centers from, um, make sure that there's enough drainage. So if the water accumulates or snow or whatever accumulates inside this lip here, that it'll drain out through that back section without having to puddle up. Um, that's my only suggestion. Really like this. I kind of wish they were mine, but they're not. So, anyway, subscribe, comment, like, um, all the typical stuff. Um, go check out AlvarezMetalWorks.com. Go like us on Facebook. The link's on the top of my website. Go follow us on Twitter if that's the website you choose to use. Um, the link is also at the top of our website. And. Yeah, talk to you guys later. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching.